Hey guys, hope you guys are having a great day today. My name's Kara, for those of you who are new here, and today we are gonna be processing all of these apples. This past week, we went to our local apple orchard and picked all of these apples. They're all full. We got an entire bushel here. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's a pretty big box. So we are gonna get started on processing all of these. I'm pretty pleased with how these apples look. They're quite large and they really don't have very much damage at all. There are a few that have a little bit of bug damage as well as some that are kind of bruised. When you are apple picking with a toddler, some apples get chucked. <laughs> so I'm not sure if some were bruised off the tree or some were just from the little ones carrying apples. I wanna go ahead and preserve as many of these as I can. I wanna make some applesauce and some apple chips in the dehydrator, as well as a few other yummy treats. But my first goal is to at least make some applesauce today. My sister lent me her giant pot. So we're gonna use this to make our applesauce. My sister actually uses this pot as a water bath canner, but I figured it would be just as good for making the applesauce so I can hopefully get it all done in one batch. It does need a good scrubbing though. I've really been liking these scrub rags. It has a scrubby side on one side and then it's just soft on the other. And I like that I can throw it in the washing machine and get it really clean and reuse it multiple times versus sponges that I was using before that got pretty nasty quick. This pot certainly looks like it a whole lot so I'm excited to see how it does today. I have a feeling I'm going to have to go buy myself one after using this. I have just been using one about a third of this size and it takes multiple, multiple batches to make all the applesauce that I need. I got this big pot washed and ready to go. We're going to start with the applesauce first. I have a peeler attachment for the KitchenAid mixer, so I think I'm going to bring that out here onto the island. When I purchased my KitchenAid mixer, they were doing an incentive and it came with this spiralized attachment for free. So this is what we're going to use to peel our apples today. It goes a lot faster than if I was just trying to peel everything by hand. It cores, peels, and slices the apples all in one step. The spiralizer comes with a few different attachments. This is what we're going to use, the one with the apple on it. But there's some that just spiralize things and make like noodle shapes. It's pretty handy. We often use the spiralizer to make kind of fake noodles, like zucchini noodles or butternut squash noodles, and it works really well. I will say though, sometimes if your fruit is a little bit soft, it can just kind of squish it and demolish it and it won't make the noodles. So for the KitchenAid mixer, it has a flip here where you can add the attachments. So you just kind of slide that in there and then there's a twist here that you spin to tighten it down. And then this is the piece that you stab through the back side of your apple and that attaches right here. This is what peels it and it just slides right into the bottom and it kind of clicks into place and then this will core your apple. The orchard we went to had three different types of apples that were ready to be picked. There was Jonah Gold, Golden Delicious, and Ida Red were the three options. So we're just gonna use a mixture of all of those for our applesauce. I believe Jonah Gold is kind of this top layer of the box. Then Ida Red is in the middle and Golden Delicious was at the bottom. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how we picked them. So this typically makes kind of a mess. So I'm just gonna put this underneath here to catch any drips. And then I have my big bowl for the apples themselves. You could put the apples into some lemon juice with water if you don't want them to brown, but I don't mind if my applesauce is a little brown, so I'm not gonna bother with that step. This will peel, slice, and core it, but it won't cut out some of the bug sections, so we'll have to go back through and do that as well. You just kind of stab. And on like that. I typically just turn my machine on to like medium. As the apple starts to peel, it will spray a little bit of juice and it kind of makes a little bit of a sticky residue on the countertop, so be aware of that. And oftentimes, 
the apple won't come off in one big peeled section. Sometimes it does, but other times part of it will fall off as it peels. So just be aware of that and make sure you catch them or at least sort through them in your peeling bowl, which is more of an issue as the peeling bowl gets filled up. And I'm going to be saving all of my scraps for either the chickens or the compost. And I'm just going to cut this in half just to make sure that there wasn't any bug damage on the inside. There's just a little bit right there. Not too bad though. That may actually just be seeds. Yep. Just some seeds. Which if I miss one or two seeds, I'm not too worried about it because you can actually make your applesauce with the seeds, the cores, the peels, everything in all together if you want. I've done that in the past, but I think the skins taste a little weird to me. Plus I kind of like some of the applesauce chunky. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but if you are gonna leave the skins and the cores intact, then you need a pretty powerful immersion blender to make sure it's all smooth. So it sometimes doesn't get all the skins off, but it gets most of them. It will occasionally miss a little bit of the skin, especially at the end, but it's insignificant in the scheme of the applesauce. You can see here that this one's kind of breaking as it peels. Here's a good example of one with some bug damage that didn't completely come off from the coring peeling process. So what I'm gonna do is just cut that little section out and then it's good to go. We have the first bowl done, so let's go dump it in the pot. This is a really big pot, so I'm sure we can fit several more bowls into here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to get this portion going while we continue working on the rest of those apples. I'm not following a recipe for this, so I can't tell you exactly how much water I put in, but you want to put in just enough that the bottom of the pan is kind of covered and no apples will burn or stick to the bottom as it's cooking. Let me try to show you the spiral. It looks kind of like a slinky when you pull it apart. Oh, <laughs> breaking on me. <laughs> I think it looks kind of cool. Yeah, it's just gonna all fall apart on me. Oh no. <laughs> I'm trying to use up the ones that have bug damage and are a little misshapen or bruised first for this applesauce, just so they don't make the rest of the apples go bad. Second bowl is done. Let's see if we can incorporate these into the other ones. The first bowl of apples I put in there are already starting to get soft and are breaking down a little bit. Steam will help soften everything up, so if we keep the lid on, it'll keep the steam in. This bowl is pretty large. We've done two of these bowls. So far, I think I want to do at least one more. I do want to save some of the apples to make apple chips and a few other recipes later this evening. Ryan and I would really like to get some apple trees planted here on our new property. And so if you have any apple varieties that you could recommend for zone seven, that are disease resistant and still really flavorful and taste good, let us know. Honeycrisp and Fuji apples are probably two of my favorite varieties just to eat from the grocery store. But the biggest thing for me is probably apples that are disease resistant as well. All right, 
right, we have our third and final bowl. Add to the big pot. This is going to make a lot of applesauce. <laughs> I'm excited. The kitchen smells like apples and roses because I have these fresh cut roses here on the counter too. The top one here is Earth Angel and the yellow ones are the surprise mystery rose from Costco. While the apples are cooking on the stove for the applesauce, I am going to go ahead and get started on our next apple recipe. I am going to make some apple chips to throw into the dehydrator. But first we need to empty out the dehydrator. I have a few things in there from earlier in the day. I have in here some red amaranth from the garden. I just put it in here a little bit so it could dry out a little bit more before I harvest the grains off of it. So let me find a container of some sort to put these into for the moment. I have never personally tasted amaranth, but I'm excited to try it here soon. I've read it has a similar texture to quinoa, which we all really like around here. Plus, it's really pretty. This is my first year growing amaranth, so I'm excited to harvest all these grains. That'll be in a future video though, I think. I'm gonna dehydrate some more and do it all at once. You can see all the little grains. This is the part of the amaranth I'm interested in harvesting. But these little tiny grains are what you can cook up, kinda of like quinoa. I'm going to try to save as much of this as I can without making a mess on the floor. I got the amaranth all cleaned out of the dehydrator now, so let's start with the apple chips. For the apple chips, I am going to put some lemon juice and water in this bowl so I can put the slices straight into here to prevent the apple chips from browning a little bit. Let me just give this a quick rinse though. For the apple chips, I'm going to try to pick apples that are pretty and nice and big. Apple chips are a favorite snack out of pretty much everybody in this house. And it's something that the kids like too, and they think they're getting a special treat when it's really just apples. The spiralizer really does a nice job if the apples are uniform with the core in the center. And then all you have to do is come through and break apart the slices for your apple chips. So I'm just gonna literally go like this, break them. That'll be one chip. i just put it in my lemon juice. Sometimes they might break in half and that's totally okay. But I like to have them round if I can. And this end that's just a little thicker, I'm gonna throw in the applesauce. Here's another apple that's a really good example of one that'll work really nicely for the apple chips. All these apples will taste great as apple chips, but the apple peeler really does its best job when the apples are uniform and a little on the bigger side. Some of the, these that are kind of squatty on one side and larger on the other don't peel as evenly, and I prefer no peels on the apple chips. However, you can totally do peels on the apple chips too. I just think they get a little tough, especially for babies. We're gonna go with the nice pretty ones. The apples for our applesauce have softened up quite a bit. I'm also going to add a few tablespoons of lemon juice to our applesauce as well, stirring it occasionally as we go. I've removed the lid now so that some of the steam can escape and it can thicken up a little bit. Everything's breaking down really nicely though. I'm going to go ahead and put in the rest of my trays and we are going to fill this whole thing up tonight. I'm going to use the mats that came with the dehydrator and some of the silicone for the apple chips. These mats do allow a little more airflow than the silicone sheets because air can get to it from the bottom too. I have our apple chips that we just sliced up here in this bowl. 
we're just going to lay them out in an even layer, making sure that they don't overlap on each tray. Now, since it's been in this lemon juice water solution, it may drip a little bit. At the bottom of my dehydrator, I keep one of these silicone mats or a piece of parchment paper just to catch any drips so that it's easy cleanup in the future. And I'm just going to put a towel here because I imagine I'll drip a little on the counter. We are just going to be keeping these apple chips plain with no different seasonings on them. However, you can mix it up if you want and do a sprinkle of cinnamon or one of our favorite seasonings for apple chips is pumpkin pie spice and just sprinkle a little bit of that on there before putting them into the dehydrator. And that just gives it a nice little extra flavor. We're going to dehydrate these apples at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 hours. I have some cans heating up in my water bath canner to can some of the applesauce. I personally like my applesauce a little chunky, so I am going to scoop some of that out for me, and then I will use the immersion blender and blend the rest up. So let's go ahead and scoop some of that out. I've just been stirring this applesauce, simmering it on low for the last little bit here, and as you can see, it reduced by about half. So I really could have added even more apples to this one pot, but it is getting pretty late on me here, so I didn't want to stay up too terribly late. This is an immersion stick blender which works really nicely for blending up the apples. However, if you don't have one of these, you could scoop it out and put it into a normal blender and then just pour it back into your pot when you're done. But that is moving around a lot of hot liquid which can be a little dangerous. If you saw my video of me making jam, then you know I struggled a bit with my jar lifters. These were the ones I was using in that video and I went ahead and purchased myself a pair with some rubber on the ends so the jars wouldn't slip out of the grips. At least that's the hope. These are very similar to the ones I had previously. They're probably actually the same. Um, they're just by ball. So let's hope that these do better than the other ones. We are just going to get all of our jars out of the hot water. This jar lifter is working much better than the other one. I'm glad I went ahead and purchased it. The applesauce is hot and the jars are hot, so we are just being careful here and pouring all the applesauce into the jars. I'm really excited to have a nice little stockpile of applesauce for this upcoming fall and winter. I used about half of the bushel of apples, so I still have quite a few left to do some fun recipes with. Several of you gave me some really good suggestions on my last video which I am super thankful for, of different recipes to make with the apples. So I'm gonna give some of those a try in the upcoming week. canned up and cooling down and I have another four quarts in the water bath canner as well as three larger Tupperware containers that I put in the fridge for eating up fairly quickly. Oh, the We've certainly made a lot of applesauce this evening so thanks for hanging out with me and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye y'all.